Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and it occurred to me that I've done a lot of talking in the star map videos regarding the government, military, and different roles that you can take on, but I haven't really taken the time to explain how the government is really structured. So today, we're going to kind of run through the UEE government and kind of help to get a better understanding of the structure and the relation they all really play together. At the top of the government's chain of command is the Imperator, and this is the position that's the leader of the UEE, and is the person that's elected democratically to serve one 10-year term. Now this person was originated back in 2546 when Ivar Messer created the prime citizen position that eventually turned into the Imperator role. For the record, the only prime citizen has been Messer. Now the Imperator was initially more of a dictator, but now functions more like a traditional president with the goal to really provide the final say in legislation with the ability to veto if necessary. And speaking of legislation, the High Secretary reports to the Imperator and is responsible for several pieces of the government and the population. The most notable of these would be the Congress, who ends up being elected from delegates and the masses of the population. The High Secretary is thus also responsible for the citizens and civilians uh, in the UEE. If you're wondering what the difference between a citizen and a civilian is, it's actually kind of like in Starship Troopers, where civilians are the normal workaday people in the Empire. Citizen is, citizenship is something that's respected and has to be earned for the most part. And you can either distinguish yourself through your military career, you can go out and do great things for people as part of community service, or you can even try and apply for a citizenship, though that's a really unlikely option and an unconventional way to try and accomplish this. For most, citizenship provides some nice benefits, like being able to own a corporation that's operating in multiple star systems. You can run for office, it's easier to get licenses to trade with other species, and lower tax rates, among other benefits. Now that benefit, um, you know, that, that being said, if you're interested in living on the edge of space, in the Wild West, if you will, there isn't much benefit to getting that citizenship, and being a civvy is probably fine for you. I'm not sure how this is all going to play out in the game, but this is the general state of at least the NPC population. Getting back to the High Secretary though, this person is basically responsible for the people and their needs. Things like communications, sewage, power, legislation, transportation, those would all be areas that would be owned by the High Secretary. And any changes that happen in these areas would end up filtering through the Secretary on the way up to the Imperator. Another direct report to the Imperator is the High Advocate, and this person not only runs the advocacy, but they're also responsible for ensuring that local governments are complying with UEE laws and like, amendments. Their primary focus is on running the advocacy, and they are sort of the, like the inner pole of space. Um, the advocacy was created with the purpose of policing across systems. So while Terra likely has its own police force, if a criminal ran from Terra to Vega, the advocacy would be the ones that would probably get involved to try and hunt that person down. In the past, this group was turned into sort of a secret police doing some very dark things, but after the Messer era, they were restored back to their traditional purpose. The Advocate pilots are feared by criminal underworld because they're supposed to be outstanding pilots who are excellently trained in apprehension techniques, but are also excellent investigators. So they typically fly solo, but if there's a very dangerous situation or they know there's going to be a battle, they typically will come out in a group. And the advocacy will typically handle their business on their own, but depending on the situation, they may end up outsourcing some work to the Bounty Hunter Guild for further support. In addition to that, the advocacy also handles the judiciary side of the government for large-scale situations. The military is the final branch of government reporting through the Imperator, and the Imperator is actually still the high general of the military, meaning that the Imperator is running the show um, with the advice from his or her generals. Now, the branch of the military that we're most familiar with is the Navy, because that's the one that we're going to have the most involvement with. And this is the largest branch of the military, primarily responsible for military strikes and transporting the other branches. When we think about Squadron 42, that's primarily going to be the Navy. The Navy was initially set up as more of a police force, or kind of like a search and rescue team to look for broken down ships as we were expanding. Uh, but once the Bandu were discovered, that purpose quickly changed. And within the Navy, you have squadrons that are assigned to carrier groups, which are ending up being run by an admiral. The Marines are probably the next branch that you're most familiar with, and they're typically your shock troops, or those first responders capable of being deployed via dropship or even drop pods. Now, the general purpose of Marines is to dominate and destroy. They're not trained in diplomacy or guard work. They come in and just dominate. 
And in our Killian system video, we talked about the bases there. And when the Marines aren't actively needed, they're actually sequestered in their bases to, on Corrin to keep training and really be constantly at the ready. And the final branch is the one that you probably don't think of as much because we're in space, and that's the Army. And the Army is a highly mechanized group that's responsible for land-based military action. You know, they're present on developing worlds to kind of help pe keep the peace and ensure order as those governments are being constructed. And their mission statement really describes their purpose extremely well, and that's to fight and win our empire's wars by providing prompt, sustained land dominance across the full range of military operations and spectrum of conflict in support of combat combatant commanders. So this was the branch that ended up launching Ivan Messer to fame, and depending on the type of war that's being waged, they could play a huge part. So that's everything that ends up running through the chain of command to the Imperator. And the person holding that office is also responsible for the well-being and best interest of humanity. So using the advice and tools of their direct reports, the Imperator is the one that makes political decisions regarding infrastructure, war, and other things. So I hope that kind of helps you guys get a better understanding of the government and their roles in Star Citizen. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some pretty significant changes and shakeups, especially with some of the kind of lore stories that we've been getting. Um, but the general consensus is that's kind of how things are going to play out. At least that's how they were leading up to the events that we're about to get into. So if you have questions about any of this, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.